Hi, welcome back to another web development video where I'll show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. In this video, um, I'm going to address an issue that I came across yesterday, which is someone wanted to know, you know, how to how to develop a website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and just sort of from the beginning, how do you do it? And I realized and looked through all my videos. <laughs> And realize that um, I haven't expressly necessarily um, done you know let's just learn how to build a page and get started from the very beginning I've done it as a part of some series but never just as one single video so in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, start from scratch and take an empty folder and fill it with an index page which is what you need uh, as your first home page and uh, how to connect a CSS file and how to connect a JavaScript file, which is, you know, the three basic components of the web. I'm going to show you some resources along the way, and I'm going to show you how to uh, put this on GitHub. <clears throat> uh, GitHub is a super easy place. The beauty of GitHub is that you can share your code with other people. So if you learn how to, uh, you know, build things and put them into different repos as different projects, now you can share those repos so if you go to look for a job uh, you can learn how to um, put things on there so that you can run things on the web and then you can also <clears throat> um, share those things with other people so let's just jump in and get started from the very beginning um, I have an empty folder here and it's called my website <clears throat> and we're gonna put all of our files in this folder um, I like to use uh, um, a text editor called Atom, A-T-O-M, like molecules and atoms. Um, <clears throat> and it's right here. And it's a, it's a pretty basic, um, it's not basic, it's not the most basic uh, text editor that you can get, but I love that I can customize it. Uh, it's written with JavaScript and so uh, it makes it easy to add plugins and things like that. But if you want to use a uh, Visual Studio, um, that's a really popular one made by Microsoft. Atom is made by GitHub, so if you want to connect it to GitHub, it it works really well. But I'm sure uh, Visual Studio Code does too, because Microsoft bought GitHub <laughs> recently. So um, maybe VS Code is going to take over uh, Atom and they'll just kill the project. I have no idea. Uh, but Atom is open source, free to download. You just go to atom.io uh, <clears throat> and this is it. So you can download it for uh, whatever your machine is. Um, so that's the text editor that I prefer to use. And the beauty of these, what they call IDEs, uh, is that you can see your list of folders uh, in the, a different pane. So if I just right click and open it with Atom, I can open my website right here. So it gives you all my project files. So when you're using a more advanced text editor, not just a notepad or something like that, uh, which will work to create pages. That's how I used to have to do it um, when we first started. But now we have access to sort of a tree of files, kind of like what you're used to seeing in, in your uh, in your operating system or you know it's a pretty common uh, pattern for finding all the files inside a folder <clears throat> so now that we're in here uh, what I like is you can add some different um, packages what they call them or extensions or plugins uh, that allow you to see different types of highlighting of the syntax or they help you to um, like when you're typing it'll give you autofill suggestions or there's all kinds of things that you can add to it uh, that just make your coding life a little bit easier. There's a lot of things that are packed into Atom uh, just out of the box that you don't necessarily have to add in. Um, so in our project we're going to create a few files and these are the main files that you need uh, just to get an, a website up and running. Uh, the one file you absolutely need is called index.html and if I click on that and sort of open my tree, I can see that I have these files. So it's called index.html. 
necessary file. This is the actual page that's going to be taken from the server and loaded into the browser. And this includes all of your HTML uh, links to your CSS files and links to your uh, JavaScript files. So with that in mind, we're also going to put uh, a CSS file. <clears throat> and we're going to call that style.css. It's just a normal convention to call your main uh, style sheet style.css. You could call it anything you want. Uh, some projects I do, it's called um, main, M-A-I-N dot CSS, like if you're using some sort of pre-processing or something. But for just plain old, you only have one style sheet for your website, then this will work. And the last file that we need, uh, you may or may not get to JavaScript for a while, but we're going to call it um, uh, a lot of times you see it as app.js, something like that. So that indicates that this is a JavaScript file, this is an HTML file, and this is a CSS file. And these are our three main building blocks for the web. Uh, so the index.html is going to hold all of our structural uh, data. So it's the actual words on the page, it's the actual links to the images and things like that. Our style.css is going to determine how those are laid out, what they look like, what colors they use, uh, spacing, things like that. And then app.js is going to control uh, interactions with the user. So whether it's uh, on page load, something happens, or whether the user actually clicks on something, it's listening for what the user is doing on the page and then we can do some things in response to the user on the page. So uh, they call us the separation of concerns. So all of these things are not in one file uh, for a reason. So you can, <clears throat> if one of them doesn't work, then the website can still work. Um, your index page will, will always be loaded as long as it has the correct uh, beginning information to it <clears throat> and there are no errors. And so at the very least, you can feed your index.html uh, to the user, even if the other two files either are not connected or there's some sort of error or something that happens with them. <clears throat> All right. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up our um, set up our HTML file. Uh, so when when a browser goes out and gets the file and brings it back. You know, sometimes in Microsoft Word or something, the, uh, it'll say, hey, I can't read this file extension or this file name uh, or this file type. <clears throat> we want to make sure that when the browser gets this HTML file, that it can read this file type and then interpret that uh, code to actual visual text and images and things like that on the page. And in order to do that, uh, we have to put some header information. Uh, that tells it, hey, this is an HTML file. Um, and then the browser says, okay, I have HTML file. I know how to interpret that. And so then it starts to interpret the file. Uh, one of the best places on the entire web to go for uh, getting started or any questions that you have about um, specific things in HTML, CSS, or JavaScript is uh, Mozilla Developer Network. So this is the... Um, Mozilla is the company that created the Firefox uh, browser, <clears throat> uh, which is an open source browser and a great secure browser to use. Uh, they have um, this section, different types of things, so you can learn about specific web technologies or different uh, tools that we use for developing websites. But they also have this Learn Web Development tool. But, uh, it's at developer.mozilla.org, by the way. And then over here, you can see a lot of different things here. So you just sort of kind of start from the beginning and work your way through this. So if you're at the very beginning of learning <coughs> uh, web design and what the web is about, <coughs> then they give you some basic uh, uh, primers and getting started uh, with the web. And the one that we're going to to deal with here is the HTML uh, basics. And I'm not going to cover the structure of HTML necessarily, I assume. Um, you're either doing that or you have some some background or you can get that uh, but we're gonna be concerned here with this um, this is our structure 
this is really like what you need to create an HTML website. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy that and we're going to bring it over here and I'll just walk you through uh, each thing. So <clears throat> um, the document type, remember when I said the browser needs to know what it's loading in, um, what kind of file it is, this tells it that it's an HTML file. So the document type is HTML and this has been greatly simplified. It used to be two or three lines of long stuff and different versions of HTML and all these things. But uh, over the years, it's been greatly simplified to just uh, the exclamation point and doc type HTML. <clears throat> and in fact, if you're <clears throat> if you're in one of these um, text editors like uh, VS Code or um, Atom like this one, then you can just do <clears throat> what is it? Is it just HTML? Yeah. <clears throat> so if you just type in HTML and then do the tab key, so you see that again. So I just typed in HTML when I click on the uh, touch the tab key, T A B, then it opens up the shell. And so it makes it super easy for you <laughs> to just start a new web page. You don't even have to write all this stuff in here. But I'll go through and describe. <clears throat> just generally what's going on so in every document there is an HTML tag so inside the HTML tag that's sort of your wrapper for the entire uh, content of the website so that's gonna have hidden content and it's also gonna have the part of the content that we see on the page um, this one is setting it to language uh, of English and the text direction is left to right so this is set up for a Western user. Um, if you are um, writing in Arabic or you're writing in some other uh, right to left language, uh, Hebrew, um, then this would change to RTL. And the web can actually um, make the text go right to left. Uh, that's part of you know what's being baked into the web. Um, and then we have these other two parts. So everything is sort of nested inside of these things so you think of this as like a wrapper around things it's like a box that's holding these things in <clears throat> you have your head section and the head section is its own little wrapper its own little box excuse me and the body section is its own little box now the head section is going to tell us a bunch of meta information so this is information that um, <clears throat> it's part of the web page it gets read by uh, different robots and things um, in the browser and it doesn't necessarily get output to the user uh, some things like the title of the web page you can see like up here uh, that little piece of information is the title of the web page so that actually gets output uh, and if they have a, a favicon or something like that it gets output to the page <clears throat> and that's all included here in the head and then the body is actually all this stuff so everything that gets output here is inside the body tags so in between the body tags so it's somewhere in between here uh, so when we open up our head section we can see that the character set is UTF-8 again another common convention uh, and then we can add a title and it can be anything <clears throat> um, just as long as you put it between the title tags it it doesn't really matter um, what your title is one thing to think about when you're doing your titles is it should be descriptive of whatever's on the page uh, so this if this is a home page for an organization or if this is uh, whatever it should just it should be descriptive enough <clears throat> that when someone looks at it at the top up here uh, that they can see Oh, okay, this is from whatever. And this is, uh, I don't know, if you go to Apple. If you go to apple.com, you can see up here, they have the Apple logo here, and then it just says Apple, right? So this is sort of orienting you to the page, because if you think about uh, having multiple tabs open, just think about what do you want users to see in order to um, recognize your tab and get back to it and say, oh, okay, that's whatever. So if it just says, 
you know, some innocuous whatever, then it's not going to help the user to orient themselves in this particular tab structure. Okay, so that's one thing to think about when you're, you're naming things. Uh, the other thing to think about is um, search engine optimization. So search engines, um, they come in sort of catalog or archive uh, all the websites on the web. So that's what Google does with their search. And then when a user goes to search, they look through their big database and their big archive and they say, do the keywords that you're looking for, or the key ideas, do they match what this website says it's about? And then there's a lot of other factors that determine whether you get in front of the user on page one or not. But one of them, and a big one, is the title of the page. And on your Google search results, um, so let's just do dogs. <clears throat> So on the Google search results, your, your um, page title is going to be right here. So this is the title that's up here in this section. So if we go to this, you can see that that title right there, list of dog breeds, uh, pet finder, is the exact same thing. So your title is important here because it's going to describe when someone's looking for um, information, <clears throat> it's going to describe what your page is about. But it's also going to help you to match people's descriptions right <laughs> so um, it's it's a little bit of a game that you have to play but in order to uh, help your website be noticed by more people you want to put a tag that's descriptive a tag that people are looking for um, a title tag I mean and at this point you probably don't care but that's something to, to sort of know for the future how to do your um, titles so that was a lot about titles, but title is a very important part as you get farther along in this journey. And then inside the body, <clears throat> uh, I'm just going to write some text. <clears throat> Here's my body section. Okay. So I'm just going to write some text here, uh, just so that whenever we um, we save the page, that we'll have a place to see it. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do control s which is save <clears throat> you have to pardon my cat she's been in so many videos here lately um so we have our body section we've saved our file and if we go back into our uh, my website folder <clears throat> which is the same folder that's being mirrored right here um, so when I add files here, it's actually adding files to the folder here. Um, we can actually do local development. So you can uh, open these HTML files locally, just without any internet or anything. <clears throat> so if you're on a plane, you can be, <laughs> you can be writing code. Uh, if you're anywhere where there's no internet or spotty internet, you can write code uh, locally. So we just click on index, you can see that it's got the little Chrome icon, so it's going to open this in a browser. <clears throat> and you can see that it does open it in a browser, it's the my website slash index.html. Uh, but you can see that this is on my local machine, so it's the, the C colon here. It just says, you know, that's my local desktop. <clears throat> and then you can see inside of our body, what's output to the page is here is my body section. Now, if we go into, if we right click and we say <clears throat> view the page source, now it's going to show us all of our code. So before we had the shiny developer tools and things like that that we use all the time, which are the inspector, it inspects the page and it gives you the same things, but it's a little bit more interactive. Um, like you can click on stuff and uh, do this kind of thing. So before we had that, we had uh, view the source code and this is how I learned web design is I would just go to a, a website we'll just take Apple you right click <clears throat> and they have it uh, what do they have okay so control U but for some reason they have the uh, oh there it is okay so view page source and then every website 
every browser allows you to see the page source for the website. So this is all the code for apple.com. And if you get to the point where you can read the code and you know what's coming up and what's happening, then you can actually go to these websites and you can see, okay, what are they doing or how do they do that? Or what is the structure of what they've done? How do they do their uh, CSS classes? Like how do they do their naming uh, conventions and things like that? So, you know, there's lots of things that you can look at uh, inside of these major websites or any website really. And you can just see what their code looks like. There will be comments uh, at different points throughout. And uh, sometimes you can read the comments. Sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're just really descriptive. Um, and you can see all the different parts of the page. So they have a lot of advanced things going on here. Um, <clears throat> our website's not going to be nearly that advanced. You can see here that it's just very basic right now. So this is your website and it's it mirrors this code and you can see that already you've created something so it's not on the web you can't share that link with anybody uh, so you can't take this and share it with anybody because it's only on your local computer it's not anywhere else it's not actually on the web where someone could put in a URL to this address bar and then go to it uh, only if they're on your computer and they can access this file specifically uh, so we want to try to make sure that other people can see it and uh, let's add a few things to our website before we put it on a live server uh, which we're going to use github for that so I'm just going to leave this here because this is just kind of the basics of the website <clears throat> and we need to connect these files to this page so we want our CSS, we want our styles to take effect, but in order to do that, it has to be linked together with our HTML file. And the way that we do that in HTML is we come into the head section. Remember, this is all the sort of mm, things that get loaded, but they don't necessarily get output to the page. Inside the head section, we create what's called uh, a link like this. And the link is going to be, uh, we say, REL style sheet. I think that's right. It's been so long since I've done this by hand. So let's see if they cover it in our, so it might be in the CSS basics. Okay, here it is. So you open your index file and you paste the following code between the head and the head tag. So you link, uh, the first is the um, href, it's a hypertext reference, that's what that stands for. Basically that's a link, right? You're linking to something and anytime we link to something we use an href which is a hypertext ref, uh, reference. So we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to link to the file and then we're going to call it rel and then the style sheet so uh, we could actually we can copy this part because we had the other part so I'm going to copy that and this is uh, looking in a folder called styles um, you're gonna have to kind of learn about folder structures and things like that maybe it's a different video we could talk about but ours is in the same place that our index H dot HTML is so all we have to do is put the the reference to the actual file. So we're just going to say, say style.css and then now our CSS file is linked to um, to our HTML file. Let's save that. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to link up our app.js and so this is going to be our JavaScript file. And this is a comment so if you do uh, forward slash forward slash uh, with JavaScript, then it's going to leave a comment. And you can tell it's a comment because it's all grayed out, right? If not, I would say uh, you know something like that. So that would be that would be an actual uh, creating a variable 
in JavaScript, and you can see that the text looks different uh, than this comment text does. So the comment text is all grayed out. Uh, the regular uh, code is not grayed out. It's actually color coded uh, to do different things. And this uh, Atom editor recognizes that it's a JavaScript file and it gives a, a particular type of highlighting. So depending on what part of the code you're writing, it'll actually highlight it in a different color so it's easier to see where the variables, where the different parts of the code. So uh, we have our app.js and we need to connect that here. And you can connect it up here in the head section, but it's become best practice <clears throat> to put your JavaScript right before, um, right before the ending of the body tag. The reason for this is the code gets loaded from top to bottom, left to right. And if you get here and for some reason your JavaScript is not necessary, usually <laughs> that's not entirely true, but for most websites like basic websites, JavaScript is not necessary. It's like an additional thing. Uh, so if you get here and your JavaScript doesn't load for some reason, uh, which is common, or if you have a lot of JavaScript, that's a, a file that you don't need that can be heavy. And by heavy, we mean it's a big file that takes a long time to load because you have to remember the web, uh, a web browser goes from the user, wherever the user is, it goes out to a server somewhere in the world. It asks for a file, it gets a file, and it has to bring all those files back uh, to the person. So if I'm in India and I'm accessing a website in America, then it literally is going from India to America and back. So the, the smaller your files, the faster it's going to load into the page. And if you can, if you have large files that are not as necessary, if you can put those to the bottom, then you load the necessary things at the top, which is going to show you, you know, sort of, what's at the top of the page. And if you have a lot of like heavy stuff down at the bottom of the page, or you have a lot of JavaScript, if you wait and defer that call till the end of the page, then it makes your website faster. Cause maybe all this stuff up here I can interact with. And then the stuff toward the bottom of the page, um, <clears throat> I'm still waiting for it to load, but it doesn't matter to me because I'm interacting with sort of the fast parts that happened at the top. So, uh, that also is another key issue in web development, but for now, just realize that uh, linking your CSS file to the top is super important because you want your styles, styles to take hold uh, when the text gets put to the page. So you want all of this uh, color and layout and things like that to happen. Uh, before all the text and the images and things hit the page, because if you wait, it's going to look like HTML and then it's going to, and then the CSS will kick in. But what you want is for all that stuff to just sort of be laid out and all that, uh, by the time all the information gets to the page and remember it's being loaded from top to bottom. Okay. So if there's another, <clears throat> If there's another section here, this is going to get loaded second, and this is going to get loaded first. So that's just how uh, HTML works, and it's one of the good and bad limitations of the code. All right, so let's go ahead and add our um, JavaScript file. And so we don't do it exactly the same way. We go back to our docs, and I'm going to keep uh, just sort of referencing the documentation here. If we go to uh, JavaScript first steps, um, let's look here. That's not it. Uh, essentially, I mean, I know how to add this, but I just wanted to show you. And find where it goes. Okay. Um, so there's what's called a, a script tag. Um, and you can actually put 
JavaScript, you can put any of this uh, right into your web page. So inside the HTML, instead of linking to your style sheet, you could actually put all of your styles here just by writing uh, what's called a style um, a style tag. And then you can put that style tag inside of your um, inside of your head section. And then all those styles are going to be loaded into your page the same way as if uh, this style sheet gets loaded in. The issue with doing it this way is that once you start creating multiple pages, think about a page with, let's say, 100 web pages, which is, you know, it's a sizable website, but it's nothing like a site like Apple. So if you go to make a change to your styles on one of those pages, but you want them to happen across all the pages, you have to go to every one of those 100 <laughs> pages and you have to make that change. Now these uh, IDEs can make that a little bit easier because you can search across an entire folder for things, but you still don't want to have to do that. Essentially you want to make it as dry as possible. So you want to make one change that changes everywhere on your website. And whenever we link to our files, then whenever we make a change in this CSS file, as long as all of the pages have this link, it'll change across every one of those pages when it gets loaded into the browser. So linking your files is way better uh, just because of the ease of maintenance. You can try it the other way and this is called uh, inline. So you can put inline styles or inline JavaScript, um, <clears throat> but you'll find very quickly that it's very laborious. Also kind of the way that we used to do it back in the day too. <clears throat> so we come in and we need a script tag. And the way that you write this is like this. You say script and the type equals text or JavaScript. Okay. And then you close your script tag. And for uh, linking our actual application files, then we're going to say source SRC equals and then wherever our file is. So just like up here, we don't, it's not inside a folder. We can just reference the file itself uh, because they're all inside the same folder. We can do the same thing with our app.js. And so uh, for this uh, script tag, our source is app.js and this will load all of this JavaScript into our page whenever the page loads. <clears throat> and I'll show you just that that is what's happening uh, so I've saved my file if I refresh nothing really happens because I didn't add anything to the body section but other things happen that are inside the uh, that are inside the the HTML so if I look up here and I look in the head section you can see now that my style sheet is being linked and that the JavaScript file is also uh, being linked to the HTML file. Again, if we do um, if we do view page source, same thing. You can see that our uh, style sheet is being linked, and that our script tag is being linked as well. Uh, so that's um, that's how you can double check if you want to do Control U or uh, you want to right click and pull up the view page source you can check to see because it should show you all of the changes that you've made and then it actually gives you a link to your style sheet there's nothing in there right now uh, but if uh, there is something here remember we wrote our JavaScript file uh, so there is something in there and you can tell that that's our JavaScript file and so if you if you want to look at what these files are or what's inside them you just click on the link and uh, it's a pretty cool way to sort of slowly go through and begin to understand what's happening on a website and a web page. Okay, <clears throat> uh, so I think that we're in a good place. I'm not going to go over a lot of HTML. This was mostly just how to set up a web page from scratch, how to get documentation to help you along the way, how to connect your files, and then the last part is we're going to put it on the web with a shareable link. Um, so that you could say, hey mom, look what I did. Uh, so we're going to go to GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B.com.
if you haven't ever heard of GitHub. Essentially, it's a place for you to store your code, and you can also uh, run your code on the website. It's free hosting, essentially, for your code. And as long as you're not doing something with a database, and it's just static code, or you're sharing something, like you could even write a story, put it on GitHub, and then share it, and then other people can participate in writing that story, or they can they can get that story, they can download it for themselves, and make their own changes to it. So you can share um, anything, really, uh, with people, and then they can download it, and they can manipulate it, and change it, or use whatever you did as a start or a base, or they can add it to their own projects. So there's lots of different things that you can do with GitHub. But one thing you can do is run websites, especially static, no, uh, no fancy code, no databases or anything. Uh, it's just a website like we have with an index file, just HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. You can run that on GitHub. In fact, uh, I have multiple websites that I develop as side projects that are running on GitHub. So this is one. So this entire website here is all being run, you know, through GitHub. And it's it's a legitimate website. It has its own name, and you can <clears throat> you can do these things uh, with GitHub. So sign up for an account if you don't have one already. It's free, and then when you sign up, this is sort of your profile page. And then up here you can do something which is called um, start a new repository. A repository is just a place to hold things, right? So a repository is a place for a project. Think about it that way. So each website should have a, a, its own repository, its own box to put things in. And this is just a, a folder essentially where we're going to put all of our files. So we give it a name. And it's going to tell you if it's available or not. And it's going to be at my, uh, my special URL. Uh, which is Brian Hefferkamp. All right, and we can also add a description here. So this is my new website. It's awesome. And we can decide to do a public repository, which means that um, anyone can see it. And you can still choose who uh, actually tries to add to the files or not. Um, but if you do a private one, that means only you can see it. So other people can't see what you're doing. Uh, both of these are free. Private used to be you had to pay for that, but you don't anymore. And uh, you want to initialize uh, the, the new repo with a readme, especially if you're just sort of creating a new one. You're not importing a website or anything, which we're not. <clears throat> so then we just want to create a repository. And now we have our new website. It doesn't look like very much, but it's my new website. This is my new website. It's awesome. Here's my description up here. And once we have uh, a URL for it, then we'll be able to put it here as well. Okay, so what we need to do is this is our bucket, essentially, and our folder online. And we need to create... Uh, we need to put our files for our website in here. Now the easiest way is to just go to upload files and then you can either drag your files here so if we open our folder get it both on the page so we could uh, we could grab all these files and just drag them in like this. Um, you can go here and then just choose your files and do the same thing uh, so I like to just drag them in. So I'm just going to grab them and drag them right on top. <clears throat> Let's see if it'll do it. Okay. So I uploaded one file. Not sure why it's not doing them all at the same time. But we work with it. We work with computers. This is how it is. 
Okay. Well, I don't know if it's going to do what I want it to do. So let's go to the desktop. Yeah. Oh, it's telling me that it can't upload anything because the file is empty. So let's go ahead and go to our style. And the way you add a comment in style, uh, a style sheet is a forward slash with an asterisk and then an asterisk and a forward slash and anything in between these asterisks is going to be a comment. So this is our main style sheet. Okay, we'll save that. And then now when we go back uh, to GitHub, let's see if it loads it in. Okay, and now it loads it because there's actually something, it won't just upload a, an empty file, I guess. Uh, you can, in GitHub, each time that you uh, make a change to your website or you change to a file and you upload your file to make the change, um, you can give it a name, a description. You can say, this is what I did and give it a title. So I'm just going to say initial commit. A commit is just when you make the change, you push the file to the server and make it live. That's how we talk about it. So the initial commit is just, this is the first time I'm uploading the files. That's all I do. Okay, and we're going to click the green button. It's processing the files. And now you can see that our files are inside of uh, my new website. So if you click on the file, you can see here that all of our content is there. And if you click on the index, you can see that our entire index page is there. So whenever you're putting things on GitHub, people can see them as long as it's a public uh, repository. And they could theoretically just come in and download your code or copy and paste it. So something to be uh, mindful of uh, whenever you're doing things with GitHub. But the reality is once, once it's online and people know the URL, they can come in and get the source code anyway. So this is uh, one of the things with dealing with the web. It's free, it's open, and it's free and open. So uh, one of the things we have to, to work with is the fact that if you're doing something special, uh, anyone can do it. We're all working with the same code, we're all doing special things, and we're all able to take those things from one another. So this is actually beautiful because it allows you to learn uh, more quickly uh, which is that's how we learned back in the 90s whenever I was uh, starting to learn web development was you just went to a website you saw what they're doing you look at the source code and you try to do it yourself all right uh, so we have our website here now we want to get a URL for our website uh, right now it's just a bunch of files online so we go to settings and you can see here and if we scroll down to <clears throat> github pages so pages allows you to uh, host your website from github so it's sort of a special little thing that has to be done and first you have to choose it's disabled by default so you have to choose to enable it and you can either disable it or you can use the master branch now you're gonna have to go in you have to learn more about get uh, github and um, Git, which is a version, a versioning ideology, I guess. Um, but essentially, there are branches like a tree. So your main branch is called the master branch, and that's um, that's sort of the main files of the website. But if you want to like try new things and make changes, you can like a branch on a tree. You can branch off, and you can sort of explore some different things. And if you like what you're doing you can add it back into the master and then it becomes a part of your master code file uh, otherwise you could just kill that branch and cut it off and and the main files are not destroyed or changed you've just sort of explored and so it's a way to make changes to the code without uh, making changes to like the main part of the code so kind of difficult at first to understand but you get a hang of it so the master branch is the only branch that we have right now. We don't have any like little offshoot branches. 
So that's going to be our page. And essentially what's going to happen is our website's going to be fed. Uh, it's going to use those files in our main folder, the one, the repo we just made, which is my new website. Uh, you don't need to choose a theme because we are theoretically creating the theme through the website. <clears throat> so this is our URL. So if we just open that in a new tab, you can see that we have a link. Now this link can be shared anywhere. So let's say, uh, Let's say we go to Twitter. Just log in. I wasn't particularly ready for this part. So we create a tweet. We put our URL there <clears throat> and we tweet it out to the world. Now you can see that it shows up here. And when I click on that, it goes to my website. So you have a live functioning website uh, through GitHub. Where is it at? Here it is. Uh, through GitHub. And anytime you make changes to the code here, uh, so let's say we change our HTML. So we don't say, here's my body section. We say, here's my awesome new website. And we control S, we save that. We go back to our GitHub and most developers would say this is sort of the long way around but this is kind of how you learn uh, how everything works eventually you get into things that are automated and when you make those changes it gets pushed to github automatically and you don't have to worry about doing this where you upload the files and stuff like that but everybody kind of learns how to take files and put them onto a server so don't worry so then we put our index here <clears throat> and we'll just say we changed uh, the body content. <clears throat> we commit our changes and anytime you commit those changes, it'll overwrite the file. So just to know that that's why we do the branches and stuff so that we can see things live and we don't overwrite the main file. So, but in this example, we want to overwrite the main file. Uh, we're just learning. So you can see here that that's our comment, right? That we changed the body content. And when we click on that, we can see what got changed inside the file. So this is one of the really cool parts about uh, GitHub. And when you start working with teams and stuff like that, it, it uh, is very helpful. <clears throat> so we have uh, changed our content. And then we go back to our website. We refresh. <clears throat> Let's see. It hasn't yet kicked in. It sometimes takes a minute for uh, your your files to to change on GitHub. <clears throat> so to propagate. Let's make sure that that file actually changed. So you can see here that the file has changed, but it takes a little bit of time. <clears throat> for those changes to be reflected uh, here. <laughs> so maybe we'll come back and see that. But you can see that your website is, um, you can see that your website is uh, changed <clears throat> right here. And you're able to take a website from a folder and you've created the website uh, using your text editor. You've taken your files, you've put them onto, um, <clears throat> you put them into a GitHub repo, and now uh, you have a link, right? So if we go back to the settings, <clears throat> we can copy our link, copy the link address, and then go back to our page, and then we can just set our, our link address up here so that anytime any, <laughs> anyone wants to see the website, including you, uh, you can just click on that link and go to your website. So uh, this is a pretty cool thing. Uh, GitHub keeps track of all the changes that you made. Uh, it allows you to roll back your website if you 
made a change and you don't like it, you can roll it back to an earlier time and uh, your website changes will just be kept um, and it'll go back to a previous state. So if something happened and it broke everything, you can just sort of roll it back to a previous time and try again. <clears throat> uh, hopefully this is um, kind of a quick overview of how to get a website online in 2020. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, this is bare bones, basic uh, beginner level stuff. And from here, you just sort of uh, build on uh, adding in CSS, HTML into your files. But this is the basic how to, how to structure your website uh, for a modern era and then how to get it online uh, for free. If you want to pay for hosting, you can pay for hosting and you have your own special space. Um, <clears throat> it can sometimes make it easier. Uh, if you're doing projects for clients, you can put client projects on your own server. Uh, it's going to be more difficult to do those kinds of things with GitHub. But for small projects, uh, side projects, for, um, there are lots of different reasons that you might use GitHub in order to uh, put things online. You don't need a lot of bells and whistles or anything, uh, just sort of basic hosting. Then GitHub is a fine place. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go click the subscribe button. And if you click the bell, then you'll get notified uh, whenever I put new videos out. And um, click the thumbs up if you want to sort of pay this forward. All my videos are free. And I do get some, a little bit of money off of advertising and things like that. So whenever you click the button, uh, the thumbs up button, that helps the algorithm know that this is good content. You enjoyed it. You appreciated it. And um, the more people that see it, uh, the better I can do, which may not mean a lot to you. But trust me, clicking that thumbs up is just a way to pay it forward if you've gotten some value out of this. And uh, share it with your friends. So share it with your uh, social media networks or if there are people specifically that you know could use the video and have been looking for something like this share it with them directly um, <clears throat> and you can follow me on Twitter you saw me on Twitter it's uh, Brian Haffercamp uh, at Brian Haffercamp and uh, that'll be linked in the comment or in the uh, the description section uh, I think that's it um, I'll put a link to this uh, repo on there as well that way you can you can go directly to these files and you can sort of see them on uh, on GitHub uh, yourself. Uh, you could download the files if you wanted to, uh, if you want to take them and play with them as sort of a starter kit. Um, you just use the green uh, clone download button and you download the zip file and then it'll download these files. These files right here, they'll get downloaded to your machine. And then you can open them in a text editor and make those make any changes or play around with it yourself. Um, but ideally, you're starting from scratch watching the video and you're making your own website from scratch. So the idea is to start uh, your own pages this way. And every page that you do is going to start this exact same way. So that's why I wanted to kind of keep it to this place so that if you created a new page, <clears throat> um, really all you would have to do is to uh, duplicate the page like this, and let's say we have an about. And on our about page, um, we're gonna have basically the same type of information. We're gonna link our app.js, we're gonna link our style.css. Uh, and you know, we will change all this uh, content in the body because it won't look exactly like our home page. And we'll change this here. Uh, you know, something like that. And then we come back to our files. Uh, we have a new page in here. It's called About. And when we click on that, you can see that this is a little about me. And this is our About.html page. So there's a. Um, and you can work on figuring out through Mozilla Developer Network, you know, how do I link these two pages together? How do I link two HTML pages together? 
and you use a specific sort of tag in the body section uh, in order to link those two pages back and forth to one another. So you can figure that part out on your own as you learn HTML, but this is the shell that you're going to use for all of your pages. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, if something doesn't make sense or I went too fast or something, let me know and I'll try to try to cover that back. Um, hopefully this is a good primer for you as you begin your web development journey. Uh, it's a long one and there's lots of things to learn, but it also means um, like there's all, a lot of corners to turn, a lot of exciting things uh, just sort of around the corner all the time. So it's been a great uh, career for me and uh, haven't been in it as long as I wanted to, but uh, for the time that I have been in it, it's been really rewarding and amazing. I love to build stuff uh, online and to make things out of nothing. That's essentially what you're doing. And people can interact with it and they can learn from it and they can be moved and changed by it. And the web is a beautiful thing. So embrace it, embrace the technology and just sort of dive in and make your mistakes and break stuff and fix it. And this really is the way that you get started. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.